installation of field level action and data security is uh, quite a simple process. Um, the first thing is to export a file with tables and pages and it's going to be used for source code analysis. Then uh, we need to import the new objects. We need to run the source code analysis. We select the tables we want these additional features on. Then we implement the changes. After that, we import the modified pages. And at the end, I'll show how to use this data in a different company also. So uh, let's go uh, take a look at this one in NAV. And I have a 2009 R2 demo database. The only thing that has been done is a few users has been added in there. So first thing was to go export uh, all the tables and forms. And the easiest way of doing that is just to filter out one or eight. That is table and page. And then go export this one to a text file. And I don't have permission to that one with this license, so I will need to switch to a license that have uh, that access in there. This one typically require a, a partner license, but also with the right designer modules, it can also be done with a customer license. So I'm just going to select that one. And connect to my database again. So on my tables and pages, and then export this one uh, to my text file. While this one is exporting, I'm going to download the easy security objects in there. They're available on merchstore.com's website on the download tab, and uh, you can download the file. There's also access to a lot of documentation, installation document, and so on and a history document that explain what's changed between each version of Easy Security Actually out there also. But my file finished uh, downloading out here. And I can see I have one compressed file in there. So let me extract that one into my temp folder in here. So if I go take a look at uh, files, I had a new folder in here, and I have some conversion code between older versions of EC security and integration. Then I have language modules, and if you have anything else in English, you will need to import the language module into the EC security objects. For each executable version of NAV, there's a folder in here. There's some additional uh, files that are needed for the roles and logins. We have online help, and you can open that online help. It has installation instruction and many other things in here uh, included in this online help file. We also have help for 2013 R2 in here, so um, you can add those ones to the help server. The demo data is for the roles and logging portion in here. So let's go and import uh, the objects. And I uh, went into that easy security folder, 2013R2 down here, and there's three files in there. One is the objects of easy security. There's only one potential object that will cause problems in here, and that's actually the menu suite. That can potentially be used by another um, add-on, but right now it's a create, so I can just import all the objects in here. The other thing, I need to import this file. This one is some objects that are being modified during the field level and data security install, and we need to import them the first time, but in future updates, this should not be imported in here. Again, it's just four code units in here. To make everything um, work, um, we just want to ensure that we actually can compile all of so I select that ES in anything that starts with ES in the version list. I can uh, just compile these objects. In here. This just ensures that all the code actually matches uh, the current uh, database. 
and actually left my filter open hanging on my tables and pages in here. So just delete that one in here and then compile all of this. So now I got the 233 plus four uh, additional code in So 237 new objects. Also to ensure the menu suite works properly, uh, we need to compile for those ones. So we need to remove all filters, select menu suites, and then compile all those ones. This one is very important for the easy security menu to actually show up, else they won't show up typically in the departments menu in here. So we done uh, exporting the files. So let's go back to um, NAV back here. And um, we keep all the data for the implementation in, in, in a different company. And that's also the same company used for roles and logins. So let me go here and create a new uh, company. The install wizard for the field level and data security is typically run after roles and lockings. And there is a couple of things that is a little easier if those two are actually run after each other. But in this case, I'm actually showing them uh, independently. Um, so uh, I'll select my new company. You initialize the uh, setup in here. I don't really need anything else than that. So uh, I'll go down to my department menu, easy security field level and data security, and open up my setup in here. The first thing I will need to do is to get relations from the source codes. And to do that, I need to uh, select my install allowed, and then I need to browse to my file in here. And it's very important because the service tier is actually the one reading it. So on my computer, I shared a folder temp in here, and I can actually go find my text file with a UMC pass in there, something that is the same for the service tier and the client. In there. So that's an important piece to use a pass that is common between service tier and client, and that the user running the service tier also have access to. But they also would just get relations from source code. And this process is actually reading the text file. You will also get the information about what page is using which tables. That is what we use for the setup in here. If this process runs really slow, it's because the file is placed in a location that is not optimal for the service tier to read. So a folder directly on the service tier is the best place to put these uh, files. In. But it scanned all the um, relations in here. In the case where you had roles and logins first installed, you can click on Get Relations, and it's going to reuse that data in here. So, but I'm running the standalone install here. Next thing is to select which tables you want these additional features on. And it's better to start out uh, with a few tables and then add going forward and adding too many tables because the wizard that can write the code can always add uh, additional tables in here. Um, but if you want to remove some, you actually have to delete all the code and re-implement it in only the tables that are, it's needed in here. So I, so I selected uh, just seven tables in here in the standard uh, typical places where you will benefit from the field level and data security in here. I now selected my table and I can actually reuse this file in here, but I also have some functions depending on the license that actually can reduce the number of objects in these files, so you don't have to export every object. But I have already exported everything, so I'm going to run this function in here. It now runs through the text file. Again, it will um, read the tables. It won't change anything, it just needs a few settings from that. And then as it gets to the pages, if it's some of those tables I uh, selected, that is the source table, it will write the code necessary. If I already had all the code written in here, it would actually not change the page. Now I'm installing it in a clean database, so I don't really have anything else uh, 
to do it. Or there is no code, so it will write it in all the pages where it needs it. Even this one is just code running in NAV. What actually is happening here is program. So if certain issues occur after this one, it really typically require a developer to figure out what it is. So it's not something that you should just run without knowledge of how development in NAV actually works. In there. Even if you actually got a license that can do it, you can end up with situations where you have objects that don't compile. And if you do it in the production database, you will have users that can't use that screen until it actually ends up being compiled. In there. So normally a very good thing to do is actually also to export all the objects in FOP because then you can revert a single object from the FOP file if necessary. So it's very rare that the code added in here or maybe is causing the problem. It's typically old issues with the objects or missing OCXs, DLLs and so on that causes the problem. What I can see in here, I had three code units modified, 93 pages, and it uh, finished the install wizard in here. So if I go look in my temp folder out here, I can see I now have an out file with the modified objects in here. So I'll go in here, I'll import this one, and again, it require a developer license at this point um, for NAV, because I need to import from the text format in here. So when I open up this one, it imports the pages, and at the end I'll see it imports three code units. That is the one that stores some settings and are used for certain functions inside Easy Security. So uh, let's look at all objects and uh, look at the one that are not compiled in here. And I can see I have three code units, and then I have uh, several pages in here. If we look at the date and time on those ones, I'll see all of them have the exact same date and time up here. So in the case where you would have a development environment, a test environment, and a production environment, you can have your test environment where you don't have, or your development environment where you don't have any of this code in. When you move objects to text, you actually just overlay the one that are in there. You run the wizard if the code needs to be added, it will modify those objects and then it will import with a new date and time in here. When you move to your production database, you can actually just filter on the date and time in here to also include those objects that were modified uh, by the installation of this one. So that simplifies the whole process of actually um, having three level uh, of databases in here, and you don't really have to run installation in your production database. You can just move objects. Um, but let's go ahead and compile this one. And these objects are now being compiled or modified for three code units and the pages with the additional code in here. So the object finished compiling in here. If I go back to NAV, uh, I'm done with the setup in here. Uh, and if I wanted to add more tables in the future, I'll go to the source table setup. We can take a look at what was created automatically here. There's no user security setup, there's no grouping, but there is a field level security code created for each table in here automatically. There is no data security either because that's something that depends on uh, how you want to use it in here. If I switch to my other company in here, the Kronos International in here. I don't have any of this data in here. And that's really why I want to go set up my users in here for field level and data security. So the first thing to do is to run um, or set up a function to copy data in here. As I do that one, you saw there was a little updating lookup data. And that's actually one of these code units being created that for additional companies put in the necessary data so you can look up to actions and things like that. I don't want to check the install allowed in this company, but I want to go down to the copy data tab down here, select the company where I actually ran the install in, and that's the easy security company. And then I say I want to copy from the setup company 
By default, it checks the field level security setups and the data security setups. You can also copy users and groups if you actually want it in here. You can still add additional field level security codes locally in here if you want. This one is just that all the one that exists in the setup company will be copied in here. There's a function up here to copy data. You can also access that from the menu in here. So it's very similar to the publish process in the roles and logins, where you basically go in and push all the permissions out to the active. In this case, you copy data between companies in here. Um, but I can see I got my new uh, field level security codes in here. And that's basically now ready to be used in here. All the read only were now copied over to this company. When roles and logins, the company is, um, or the data is common to all companies, in field level and data security, everything resides inside each company should not have any problems with users that have only access to maybe one company in a database, for example. So that's why this copy function works. If I run copy from this company that's kind of as a charted company down here, then I will only pull the data down. If I switch to my easy security company, that is kind of the master company up here, and I go down and run the copy function, you would actually run this copy function for each company in the database. So it's kind of a publish where it will push it out to multiple companies. My database only have one company, of course, so it don't do so much. Um, but it also will run for each company that has been set up to copy. Okay. That's basically the setup of field level and data security in here. Uh, it's a quite simple process, but just Remember that it required developer license for the initial install. On a regular basis, you don't need it for anything else than adding more tables. And it is a development task, so be a little careful with it.